I'll be showing my top 20 Microsoft Word tips and tricks. These include new features, advanced tips, and AI-infused intelligence that goes into Word. If you're looking for a video that shows formatting and setting margins, this one's probably not for you. But if you want to understand the modern Word and features you might not know about, then let's get started. The first tip is editor. If you haven't thought about your spell checker in the last 10, 15, or 20 years, then editor is for you. It is the next generation spell checking in Word. Now it's on the home tab way on the right here, editor, but I'm going to go to the review tab and we've replaced the spell check button with editor. I'm going to click this and you'll see this pane opens up and it analyzes everything in my document. Now we've organized things really nicely. We have the classical spelling, so I've got spelling here. It's nicely organized. You can see the word here. I can even read aloud. X. The veterans encouraged repeatedly the entrepreneurs. And using the arrow here, I go back and maybe I want to check on grammar. So grammar, this has existed for a while, the grammar checker. And you can see it highlights, but it's now nice and organized. I hit the arrow here and it jumps me to the next spot. And I can also read aloud. I can read aloud in any of these cases. And here's the suggestion, the classic effect versus effect. But editor has many other things like clarity. This is a new concept of using natural language processing. Look at the suggestion here, gives you clarity in improving how your document is coming across. Formality, if you're using barfed, maybe vomited is more appropriate and you can go to the next one. Go bananas versus go wild. And there's many other things in here. Inclusive language, stewardesses went out of style decades ago. You probably shouldn't be using that one. And Eskimos is no longer appropriate. Young blood versus new people and other examples like sensitive geopolitical references. If you click settings here, you can drill in and go right here to settings. I've enabled everything almost in editor, but there's all sorts of new concepts you can explore. So editor can really check everything, grammar, clarity, conciseness, formality, and a whole lot more. The second tip is built-in dictation, also known as speech to text. On the home tab here, way over on the right, there is a dictate button. When I click this, I can type with my voice and I click it. Microsoft Word now has built in dictation period. The quality of the speech to text is incredible and you no longer have to use typing. You can use your voice instead, period. I just click this to turn it off again. And if I want to choose a different language, I click the little drop down and you can see all the different languages and there's many, many more coming. We have more coming in 2021 and beyond. The third tip is focus mode. This can allow you to focus only on the content and not on the user interface. So if I go to the view menu here, there is a focus button. Let's click that. It immediately removes all the other content. And if I go to the top here, I can actually choose the background as well. So I can choose a dark background. I can choose a red background or a blue background. If I click away, that toolbar disappears. To turn focus mode back off, I'll go up here and I'll click focus and it removes it and puts it back into the regular word mode. The fourth tip is the immersive reader. The immersive reader was inclusively designed to help all people with reading. And now it's part of word to help make documents even more accessible. The Immersive Reader button is on the View tab, similar to Focus Mode, and actually the button is right next to Focus. So I'll click Immersive Reader, and I'm going to walk through what happens. This special toolbar appears that is the Immersive Reader Contextual Toolbar. Now first off, I can do something like reduce visual crowding by increasing the text line and word spacing, and I'm going to click Text Spacing here. And it actually spaces out the text and letters for some people that can help with reading speeds as well as comprehension. I can maybe make the text a little bigger here. So down below, we'll click this a couple of clicks to make it a little bigger. I can also do things like make the column more narrow so I can make it more narrow. Some people prefer just a few words per line. I can change the background color. So many different options here. You can see I can choose a few different colors. A lot of people don't like to read with the white or the black background. Maybe in this case, I will give it a blue background. Now we also have read aloud and read aloud can help read those words out loud with line and word highlighting. If I click read aloud, let's listen. The Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest is an expansive forest located in the And Amazon you can control Basin. the pause. You can jump forward, jump backwards. You can choose the voice type. So different voices and you can also change the reading speed faster, slower. 
etc. Last couple things we have, breaking words into syllables. So if I click syllables, you'll see the words are broken into syllables automatically. For some people that can help in terms of decoding the word. And this is a, just a little switch you can turn on and off. And lastly, line focus. So if you wanna focus the eyes, single line, three lines or five lines, this can help people who have ADHD, students or people with dyslexia, cerebral palsy. So if I choose line focus, you can see I can navigate now just one line at a time, or I can go here to line focus and choose three lines or five lines. So all of that is built into the immersive reader. And if I close this, you'll see the document reverts just back to the way that it was. This is also helpful with co-authoring. Maybe you're collaborating on a document. Some people don't use the immersive reader. Maybe there's a few people who do use the immersive reader. They can have their own settings that are unique and private just to them. It's like a special layer over the document so it doesn't change the document structure at a core level. The fifth tip is the resume assistant powered by LinkedIn. If I go to the review tab, over on the right, you're gonna see resume assistant. Word is really popular for building resumes. So let's click this. This pane opens up and it says, hey, looking for inspiration to craft your resume, let's get started. I'm gonna add my role, product manager, I'm in the software industry. Let's see some examples. So here are some examples. I can scroll down, I can open, read more, read less. I could see some more examples. There's also top skills for product managers. So whatever you put in, it puts in some of the top skills it pulls directly from LinkedIn. And then there's some articles to help with resume writing. Another option, additional language refinements for resumes. So if I turn this on, this can give me other refinements as I'm using Word based on what I'm writing. It even has some suggested jobs. So hey, here's a DoorDash product manager option here. If I click see more jobs on LinkedIn, it will launch LinkedIn with those keywords that I put in. So you can see computer software and product manager, and it has a bunch of different options. So it links Word directly into LinkedIn in a really nice way that can be helpful. The sixth tip is dark mode. This is a really easy one, but really nice. I'll go to the file menu and then go down to account and then office theme. You'll drop this down and if you choose black, you are now in dark mode. And that's really nice, it's pretty easy on the eyes. The seventh tip is transform your Word doc to a web page, and this uses Sway. It's a pretty new feature that not a lot of people know about. So here's my Amazon Rainforest document. If I go to File, I'm gonna choose Transform right here. This is gonna pull up the Transform page, and this actually creates a Sway. Now you can see there's lots of different styles here. I can click here and it'll give me a little preview few different options. And Sway will make a beautiful web page that really focuses on the formatting so you don't have to. So I'll click transform here. So with just a few clicks, I now have this beautiful web page and Sway takes care of all of that formatting for me. I'm gonna scroll back up. I can share this with other people if I click share. I can edit this Sway. So this got created, but I can go fully into Sway and edit. I'm not gonna do that today. And there's also ways that you can duplicate it, save it as a template, print, many other options. The eighth tip is the ability to translate your Word document just in a single click to an entirely another language. So if I go to the review tab here in Word, there's a translate button. And if I drop this down, I can translate a single selection or the entire document. And I'm gonna choose document. It opens up a pane on the right here, and I'm gonna drop down the two, meaning which language, there are over 70 languages in here. Everything from Icelandic to Arabic to Hmong. And then I'm gonna choose Spanish in this case. And I'm gonna click translate and it will generate an entirely new document in Spanish. Here's the document, it's fully translated. It's just now in Spanish. All the headings and the images are kept. The ninth feature is collaborating in real time in Word. A lot of people think of Word as something that doesn't do real-time co-authoring. It turns out it does just as well as Google Docs and can support many, many, many people. We call it classroom scale. So if I go up here in the document on the share button, I click this, it will pop up a dialogue and I can enter the name or email address of who I want to send a link to so they can open this up and collaborate as well. And right here you can choose. Maybe I just want it to be certain people 
Maybe I don't want to allow editing. Maybe it's just a read-only document. I would uncheck it in that case. I can set an expiration date. Maybe you can only co-author it for a week. I could even set a password. I could do things like block the download. But in this case, we're gonna keep it simple and say anyone with this link can co-author this document. And I'll click apply. And then we'll just put in the name or the address. So in this case, I'm gonna send it to my friend Alex Wilbur and we're going to maybe add a message. Let's collaborate on this document and I'll click send, sent it off. Here's Alex, he received the email invite from Kara about the document, he's gonna open it up. Alex opens up the document and he can start co-authoring. So he can go type and then Kara will see that in real time. Now I can see that Alex is typing right here. I see his little, hey, there's Alex Wilbur, he's in the document with me. So Alex is typing right underneath me. Word supports more than 30 people typing in real time. So this is something to try out. It works with Word desktop, in the browser, iPad, all at the same time. The 10th tip is at mentioning someone in a document. So this is a common technique, the at mention, many social media platforms use it. So for example, if I wanna highlight this sentence here, I'm gonna at mention Alex. So I go to review and I'm gonna add a new comment here. And over here, I type the at symbol and I'm gonna type in Alex Wilbur. There's his name and this is gonna get his attention. Can you fix this part? Now when I hit send, it's going to at mention Alex and then he can reply to this comment as well. And you see the little comment box here, but now what you're gonna see from Alex, I'm gonna sign in and show what he receives in email so you notify him that you've been at mentioning him. Okay, here's the mail from Kara and it says, Kara mentioned you in Amazon Rainforest. Alex has this, he's only using the web browser and it actually shows exactly what part where she mentioned him. So I can go to the comment, I can actually even add a comment here in the mail. So I can say, sure, I'll update that and I can insert it so I don't even have to leave my email. I can just answer that and it shows up in the document. I can also go to the comment, so if I click this, it launches Word and takes me right to the comment. And I can even see that Kara is live in the document right now. But you can see I replied an email and it added that comment here and I'll show in Kara. In her case, you can see Alex's comment was, sure, I'll update that. He added it right there. The 11th feature is saving as a PDF. So if I go to the file menu on my Word document, save a copy, I drop this down and I can choose PDF and I'm gonna just leave it as Amazon Rainforest and I'll choose a location. Hit save. And it saves that as a PDF. This actually opened it right up in the Edge browser because the Edge browser is a PDF file. There is my Amazon Rainforest now as a PDF. I can also do the reverse. I can open a PDF in Word. Let's do that. I'm in Word and I go to the file menu and I'm gonna choose open. And I'm gonna browse to a PDF I have locally on my drive. Okay, here's learning tools, research PDF. Let's open it up. It gives me a prompt, it's gonna convert this. Here's that entire PDF. It is now opened up inside of Word. I can select text, I can delete it. I can even do things like translate the document, use Immersive Reader. All of those things that I showed earlier are now accessible in that PDF that I just opened in Word. The 12th tip is using the Office Lens free mobile app to take a photo of anything and then having it OCR and send it into a usable Word document. Office Lens is free on iPhone or Android. Link is in the description to install it. And I'm gonna tap here to launch it. Okay, here's a picture of a book. I set it to document and snap a photo. Size up the image, tap confirm. And now I'm gonna tap done. I'll give it title of book photo. And now tap where you wanna send it. And I'm gonna tap Word. It's gonna send this to Word into OneDrive in the cloud. And now we'll switch over to show what that looks like. Now I'm here as Kara at office.com. I'm gonna to go to my OneDrive icon here. And under my files, you're gonna see this new Office Lens folder was created automatically. I'm gonna click here. And there's the book photo that I just snapped with Office Lens. Let's open that up. Look at this, the entire page is now OCR. And if I scroll down, I see the text as well as the original image. And I can open this up in Word Desktop. Let's click here and say open in desktop app. Here's that document in Word Desktop. I can do things like the immersive reader that we showed before. I could translate this document into an entirely different language just like we showed. So you can take a photo of anything, a sign, a book, or a menu, anything in between, put it into Word with Office Lens, and then do anything you want with it.
The 13th tip are drawing and inking tools. If I go to the draw menu here, you're gonna see a bunch of options. I've got pens, eraser, I have the ability to do ink replay, and I'll show a few of these. So I've chosen a red pen here, and there's different thicknesses. You can make it really thin, uh, medium thick, I'll choose that one there, and I'm just gonna do some drawing on the page. I've turned on draw with touch so I can even use my finger. So I can make a nice smiley face, which everyone likes. I can circle stuff, I can draw an arrow to it, all really easy. I can also choose pens. So here's a rainbow ink. That one's kind of fun. So if I wanna make some rainbow shapes here, I can do a little bit of rainbow. There we go. And you can experiment with this. There's a highlighter. So if I need to highlight certain parts of the page, I can highlight right on that Word document. Now if I scroll down, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the page here and I'm gonna put my name in ink. So I'll choose the red pen, draw with touch, and I'm gonna write Mike in ink. Now I'm gonna select this and use Ink Replay. So I choose this tool, select objects, it's selected, and I choose Ink Replay, watch what happens. It writes my name back, and there's a little dial here, a little shuttle, I can go backwards and forwards. So backwards, forwards, I can pause it. So you can imagine for things like writing or things like math, this can be really useful. The last fun one I'll show is ink to shape. So if I choose this, if I draw something like a triangle, it'll actually snap it into something that looks a little bit prettier. I'll scroll down here, maybe I'm gonna draw a circle and it snaps it pretty, even a square, and it snaps it really nice. The 14th tip is screen clipping, and this is now built right into Word. If I go to the insert menu, there's a screenshot, and when I drop it down, it's gonna say what was the last window I was looking at. So I've got a browser up, and I'm gonna take a screenshot of a picture. I choose screen clipping, pulls the browser up, it goes into the disabled mode, and I just click and draw my square. Here we go, and I let go, and it pops it right into Word. Really easy to do. The 15th tip is the accessibility checker, which is built right into Word. This can help your document be more inclusive for people who might be reading it. If I go to the review tab here, I'll choose check accessibility. This pulls up the accessibility checker, and in this document I have two pictures that don't have alt text. Alternative text describes a picture, so maybe someone with visual impairments couldn't read this without a description. So first for picture one, I drop this down. And I can verify the description because one gets put in automatically through AI. Now it says map and I can update that. You can see what's automatically generated. So I can say, you know, South America map. And then I go click here and it takes me back and I can choose the other picture. So the other picture here, if I click on it, it takes me there and I drop this down. It says verify description, a picture containing trees, outdoor sky surrounded. That sounds pretty good. And that was automatically generated. So now both of my images have descriptions. I could also label these as well. I won't do that today. Now, if I close this, I go back to check accessibility. There's a few more options. There's focus mode, like we showed earlier. I could turn that on. The navigation pane, if I wanna navigate the document, that's a way to turn on navigation. We did alt text and we did the accessibility checker, but many of these are really, really helpful. And if you wanna explore all the options, you click options, ease of access, and for Word, there's many different options to explore in the ease of access settings for Word. The 16th tip is inserting online video into your Word document. So if I go to the insert menu here, you're gonna see online video. If I click this, I can paste a link, for example, to a YouTube video or a Vimeo video. Make sure you have all the provider's terms of use and privacy policies in place, but I click insert. And there we are, it inserts that video right onto the page. I can size it, I can play it, it is all ready to go. The 17th tip is interesting views you can put on your Word document. I've got my 38 page document open here. If I go to the view menu, I go to side to side. Now this puts it more like a book view, so I can scroll left and right, I can touch screen it, and so I have a touch screen, I can drag my finger and slide the pages. It looks a lot like a book. But more interesting, if I have a 38 page document like I do here, I can go and click on thumbnails. This is like PowerPoint slide sorter. So now I can go click on a page right here, I can scroll around, maybe I click thumbnails again. Instead of scrolling a 38 page document, which can take a really long time, this thumbnail view lets me scroll around and just switch to a different page really easily. 
The 18th tip is the built-in icons that are part of Word. And these are very similar to the high-grade ones in PowerPoint. If I go to the Insert menu, I'm going to choose Icons. Now, it defaults right here to Icons. You can see all these different icons. There's different categories. You can filter here, Arts, Body Parts, Bugs, Education. And if you scroll on the right, this little arrow, you can scroll across and see all the different types of icons. There's also really nice images. These are stock photos that are royalty free, so you're free to use them. Really beautiful images that you can choose from here. And similar at the top, you can categorize, so you know, sky or industry or beauty. So really, really gorgeous images. And I can go here and insert one of these. I'll go back and choose icons again. There's also cut out people. So if you need some people in your document, these are really easy to choose from. And then we have stickers. Lots of categories, bee, pig, cat, Mr. Fields, and then illustrations. So a great deal of options to choose from when you're inserting different things into your Word document. The 19th tip is using the built-in Word templates. They're really high quality and a lot of people don't know about them. If I go to the file menu here, what you're going to see across the top are actually a bunch of templates. Now I'm going to encourage you to click more templates and let's see a bunch. Okay, now we can scroll down and there's different categories. There's business, there's cards, flyers, letters, education. So let's try business. It's pulling down all sorts of beautiful documents and these are documents that you can use to start out yourself and then change and update and edit them. Education. This is a popular topic. Different brochures, newsletters, meeting minutes, volunteer forms, all sorts of really helpful templates. Let's look at one more category. Oh, resumes and cover letters. That's a very popular one. So a lot of different templates. I mean, literally there are hundreds of resume templates in here. So check out the word templates. They're right there under that file menu. The 20th and final tip is one that's a little more advanced, but really helpful if you want to slim down really big word documents. A lot of people don't know this one exists. So I'll go to the file menu and down at the bottom, I will choose options in the lower left. Now we're gonna choose advanced. Now scroll down this advanced options until you see image size and quality. This allows you to set the default saving patterns for your document. And in this one, I'm just doing it for this single document, but if I drop this down, I could say change the image size and quality for all documents or other documents I might be working on, but we'll just leave it as the learning tools document. If you have a lot of images in your document like this one has, this can help you slim it down. So if I choose drop this down, I can set this to maybe 99 pixels per square inch, or you have a few different options, 150. But this lets you customize how many pixels per square inch this will save. That can make your document much smaller. So I'll put it at 150 here. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.